dear spirit of cacao, goddess of the heart, nurturer of earth and art, I call to you from deep within in order to return again into myself, my love and light. Please, magic goddess, be my guide. Connect me to the world around, to every tree, bird and human sound. Lead me into the dark caves inside my pain where fear resides and brings a wind surrender but pull me out before I lose control again dear spirit of cacao goddess of all hearts bring me back to earth and nurture all my arts Hello, and welcome to the Flowering She Rose Budcast. My name is Anna, or for the purpose of this podcast, Anahita, bearer of roses. I'm here to bridge plant and human consciousness as we gather in this virtual garden and explore how plants can help us awaken our feminine essence. It's my prayer that these personal stories, transmissions, and medicine music may remind you of the sacredness of this magical life and the power that lies in your intuitive nature. This beautiful invocation to the spirit of cacao was written and spoken by Laura Durban, today's guest, on episode 10 of Flowering She Rose. The sound effects that you're hearing here is Laura preparing her ceremonial cacao. (laughs) Let me tell you, you're up for a really fun episode today. Oh, herrlich. Uh. Herrlich. I have a few announcements to make. The first of which is a great big thank you to everybody who's joined our Patreon so far. We now have enough patrons to cover the monthly hosting fee for the podcast. If you love this podcast and have been really getting some value out of my work then I invite you to go check out our Altar of Roses over on Patreon. We have other monthly fixed costs that I would be so happy to have uh, help covering. For example, I like to support the musicians by buying their music, the medicine songs that I feature in each episode, and a few other costs for software that I use to create episode covers and little audio snippets. And as a patron starting at the rosebud level, so for $5 a month, a chai latte, you can receive some lovely bonuses, such as monthly guided meditations, either by myself or my guests, the chance to win vibrational medicine in giveaways, discount codes to our guests' offers, and sometimes even access to entire online courses, such as Zoe Eccles' beautiful mindfulness course, and it's worth, I think, over $100 usually. Yeah, so come and join the sisterhood over there. For this episode, um, my guest Laura is going to be recording a bonus meditation, which you can listen to while drinking your cup of ceremonial cacao where she'll be guiding you on an inward journey to just really bring some intention to your personal ritual. Also, Laura is a cacao ceremony practitioner and works for the company Keith's Cacao. And she has a 5% discount code that she would like to share with all of her listeners. You don't have to be a patron to redeem it but I will be posting it over on my Patreon page. If you've been loving my work and would like to deepen your own relationship with the plant spirits and the holy trinity of your intuition, your heart, and your womb, then you can also head over to my website and learn more about my offerings such as Flowering She Readings, 
where I do a remote reading of your energy field and see which plants want to come in. And uh, the, after that, I send you an audio file um, really specific to where you're currently at. And I'm also opening my one-on-one -on -one sessions to a wider audience now, which we can do via Zoom. If you don't find that offer on my website yet, it's because I'm still working on it in the back end. But if this sparks your interest, then you can just send me an email. So that's anahita at floweringshe.com or go find me on Instagram at floweringsherose. So now a few words about Laura before we start our conversation for today. Laura is a flower fairy, a cacao witch, and a nymph. She's a visual artist, and she came in contact with ceremonial cacao while living in Iceland. Cacao led her onto the path of making magic a reality, where she can make use of her oh-so-open heart and connect so many pieces of herself. She now holds cacao ceremonies in Freiburg in Germany and loves how she can use her gifts to connect others and accept everyone just as they are. Hi, Laura. I'm so glad to have you here on the show and to learn more about cacao with you, a fellow fairy sister. Hello, Anna. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm very excited to be with you um, on this show and to have a con conversation about cacao and so much more. Yes, and so much more. We just uh, had the pleasure of listening to you in the background prepare your cacao that you <laughs> <laughs> brought into this conversation. And um, I also heard you saying, uh, calling in cacao in your own way. So I was just wondering if you would like to um, open the space for this episode and, and to call in the spirit of cacao Yes, I would love to do so. So the spirit of cacao, she has um, a lot of different names. And um, I learned the name of Chikui, and that was what I was basically yelling at when I was preparing my cacao. Sometimes I just whisper it. Sometimes I just say it to myself. And sometimes I really want to scream it out loud and have fun by expressing her name and... So I will um, invite her now. I invite you, beautiful cacao goddess, to guide us and inspire us. And I hope you will open our portals of our hearts to connect our minds, bodies, hearts and intuition. I ask you to open the doors to our inner knowing, our gut feeling. Shall we call for Chikui together? Yes, please. <laughs> All right. I got to move right. away from the microphone. That's <laughs> not blast. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> oh, she loves it. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you for joining me in inviting her in. Of course. Mm, what a beautiful opening to today's episode. <laughs> so, Laura, I have so many questions for you, but maybe we should start. Maybe we could start by um, learning a bit more about you and your story and how cacao came to be a part of your life right now. Um, yes, um, well, it was such an interesting journey. So I think if you hear about other practitioners, you know, they often say that the spirit of cacao, she called to them. And I think with me, it was a bit different. She might have even screamed, but I really wasn't able to hear her, her call, really. It started when I took my first step into becoming myself in a way of deciding something that just I wanted. So it, I'm a person with a really open heart and I'm really loving and accepting. But therefore also, I think it was quite easy for me to be leaning towards someone else 
or to society or to my parents. So um, I didn't really know which way was my way. And I was always into fairy tales and mythology and uh, magic and everything, but I never allowed myself really to listen to this um, until I took my first step on this journey. And that basically began in Iceland where I did an art exchange for, from my art study. So I'm a visual artist. And um, in Iceland, fun enough, I got connected to ceremonial cacao. And so I heard of, of it from different sources and I got to try it with friends. But um, I was so not in my body and not present with myself, as I just said. So I just drank it basically out of health reasons first because um, um, I needed to detoxify my liver. And I really loved the bitterness of the pure cacao. So pure cacao is not chocolate, right? And it's very earthy and grounding and you can add honey and such to it. But I, I was really craving for this medicine. Um, but still, I didn't feel the energetic effect. Um, it took me quite some time to actually feel or listen to the medicine or to the plant spirit. So it wasn't until I participated in a witch workshop and that came about because I met an artist and she's a witch from the reclaiming tradition. And um, she fuses in her magic into her art and it was so inspiring for me because I just started doing this while I was in Iceland as well, where I fused in um, some mythologies and stories from a wheat's metamorphosis. Um, and I think as soon as I started to tap in my initial interest for these kind of things and actually allow them to be expressed through my art, and then meeting cacao as well, things aligned. And so I felt so drawn to this workshop and it was a proper lovely weekend workshop um, with a lot of rituals and casting circles and um, energetic work as well. And after this weekend, then I, I had a cup of cacao in the evening and started drawing and painting the whole night through. Mm. And that was when I suddenly felt a bit expansive somehow inside and really connected to my own source of inspiration and intuition. And I was a bit afraid because it was in the night, right? And I was looking at my paintings, like small watercolor paintings, and I felt they were so lovely and really exactly what I wanted to express at this moment. But then I was like, oh, maybe the next day, you know, you're going to look at it and it's going to be a bit weird, <laughs> like after a trip mm -hmm. or something. Oh, yeah. um, but I woke up and they still are lovely and I still have them hanging in my bedroom and there's something that then made it clear to me, okay, that was the cacao spirit that entered and actually um, helped me connect to my creativity. So from that on, I started creating little rituals for myself, still not really hearing her call. And by now she must have screamed, really. <laughs> but I still couldn't really make sense of it all. I just used it as a little nice thing, you know, how other people use coffee or to wake up or whatever but after this witch workshop I then created rituals and I was always really connected to the elements so I invited the directions and the elements and started working with the elements in my art as well I created a video about nymphs basically about female creatures connected to a certain element and um, over that period of time yeah I just really took more time to to sit with cacao as well and to honor it as a ceremonial plant and not just a benefit for your body and your system or your creativity, but actually just as a precious plant medicine. And it still took a few weeks. Um, I was um, at an art residency and a remote village in the West Fjords of Iceland. It was snowstormy around and I took the whole day, because I had time and space, basically, there was not, nowhere to go. And I took the time and the whole day to prepare for cacao, because I had a proper ceremonial dose. Cacao from Guatemala gifted to me from um, close friends. And I, I really waited for this special moment to drink it. 
and prepare it. So the whole day was a preparation for this. And then in the evening, it basically exploded. There was a firework of love inside. It was so strong and I finally knew, oh, this is what everyone is talking about. <laughs> there we go. I feel it now. It, it was complete trust and surrender as well and love just in myself for everything that is and everything just felt right and even then I was going through a bit of a heartache like a light slight one but still and it felt so right exactly the way it should be everything was connected everything made sense And from this moment on, basically, friends kept asking me about cacao, wanted to share my little rituals. And and I just had to get rid of the idea that I had to hear a call or that I had to see a vision. I actually had to feel her. And that's perfectly fine and as valuable as everything else. As I am a visual artist, I think I expected some something in more in my face maybe <laughs> if you know what I mean mm. and from that on I'm basically developed my own personal practice with cacao and more friends came until I had 13 people around me and I thought well that's a witchy number isn't it <laughs> so it all started with a witch workshop and now we're ending in a circle of 13 And there's people coming late and I needed to fill the time a bit. So I just um, improvised a little breath work and meditation just because I thought, okay, I don't want them, you know, to wait so long and get a bit impatient. Um, and everyone afterwards was actually giving me the feedback that they so enjoyed the meditation. And I was like, wow, was that even a meditation? I just, you know, <laughs> just improvised some things like, breathe in and breathe out basically and listen yeah. <laughs> to the sounds around you and then um, it really resonated with everyone and so that's also what I do today up to this day I I hold ceremonies and I bring people together and I um, well I basically improvise meditations um, they have sometimes have certain themes like the elements I might have a water meditation for example or it might be a little story um, a little journey, inwards journey. I still do the meditations because it took me such a long while to actually feel her energetic impact. And so I invite my participants to also listen and allowing it to um, enter your system and to actually be more aware and more sensitive. Maybe there's just a slight tingly feeling that you notice because it took so long for me. So I completely understand if not everyone um, notices her at the beginning. Yeah, so it sounds like what was necessary for you to really feel the incredible visceral effects of cacao was removing the distractions um, mm -hmm. and also entering into a relationship instead of merely consuming cacao. So just recalling that day that you were describing in Iceland. Yeah, it's um, a lot about allowing time for yourself. That was something that I struggled with, taking time for myself, because I was so outgoing and always supportive for others and always connecting with others. And there was always so much to do, but never really taking the time for myself. And that then opened the portal, really to open my heart, not only to the outside world, but also to myself. Oh. You know? Yeah. Last year I had this realization that when we speak of opening the heart, it feels like we, we open up like a flower, but um, to the front, right? Right. <laughs> Towards the front. And I feel so, but what is with the backside of the heart, you know? Sometimes we have to turn the flower around. And so it spreads a wonderful odor inside of us, you know? Yeah, even have it rotating 360 degrees so that it reaches all <laughs> parts of your insides. Exactly, exactly. I've never actually thought of the heart opening process as 
relating back to yourself because I I'm kind of the opposite. I'm uh, more of an introvert than an extrovert. I've always spent lots of time with myself and in reflection, but I've had a harder time going out and being around people and groups of people. So whenever I thought of cacao as a heart opening medicine, it was in this context of helping me relate to other people, which is exactly the medicine that cacao brought into my life. And so it's just so interesting that you as a naturally open-hearted person towards the outer world had never perhaps experienced what it's like to really be present with yourself and to give love to yourself and that cacao can also work in that other direction. Yeah, so she she came into my life and she entered it and was present really quickly, but not noticeable until I actually turned my heart, in fact, my open heart around, yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. You as a naturally so open-hearted person, I was going to ask that question, like how would cacao help you open your heart even more? And you mm. already gave that answer. As <laughs> Yeah. It basically expands. So first it was the lesson for myself with the open heart, but now it's actually that I can give it to others or support them in opening their hearts, be it mm. for themselves or for others. And that's why I hold ceremonies, I think, you know, because I can, because mine is quite open most of the times, so I don't really know how to close it anyway. <laughs> but so, so it makes sense that I then give room for others to and, and help them, support them to do the same. Yeah, it's like you're embodying the medicine. You're becoming yes. a plant. You're a conduit for it uh, in the entire sense of your being. You're not just offering them medicine in a cup, but you yourself are the medicine. That is such an important part of it. And you know what? Actually, um, cacao is also called the an um, embodiment medicine. Mm. Um, it's such an integral part of at least my ceremonies that you not only have fun, which you can, you know, you can have fun, it can be super excited and everything, but it can also be super deep and cacao can help you to loosen up your emotional blockages. And then the most important part of that is actually to feel them through, to integrate them and thereby you release something. And it's a whole process of embodiment, basically, of being okay with everything that wants to come up and um, not just scratching on the surface, but allowing yourself to drop deeper. But in, in lots of places, especially also in the spiritual community, there's the thing about positivity. We have to be positive, you have to be shiny, and you know, all this good, good affirmations, and da da da, which I mean is a great tool, but it's not the whole truth because in order to be authentic, you have to actually acknowledge the positive and the negative, the, the shadow sides, the light sides, as we know, you know, there's always polarities and there's even more than that. There's all the gray zones in between as well. And for me, cacao allows this. It makes sense given its, its earthy nature. And like you said, this, this bitterness, even just the flavor has something that draws down and out in, in general the bitter flavor that works on the liver has this effect of like you said removing toxins but mm -hmm. also dehydrating and and that whole process is a process of down and then out of your body yeah releasing right how was this for you when you had your first sip of cacao as you just said the bitterness right and it's such an unusual taste if you're just used to chocolate before I don't think I ever had an issue with a bitterness, um, but I'm just remembering how I had been in touch with ceremonial cacao here and there without actually noticing any effects. And I was just wondering about the, the setting, what was happening. Mm -hmm. So those were moments where I had um, purchased perhaps some, some drops of rose cacao at a farmer's market and was kind of popping one in my mouth here or there <laughs> um, without actually noticing any effects. And I'd had a small ceremony with a friend without 
having, you know, learned much about cacao beforehand, feeling excited because we were going dancing afterwards. But none of these experiences even came close to the healing that happened for me last fall when I was at a community weekend um, called Be Alive. And we were a group of about 30 people doing all kinds of uh, workshops that had to do with, you know, mainly relating and but also experiencing yourself um and that that evening we did a, a cacao ceremony together that involved a whole bunch of instruments and they had set up a speaker system and everybody was allowed to participate and we were actually taking turns between being the ones using the instruments and then being in the group of people that was dancing to the music and then there was always a group of people that was um just witnessing what was going on and we were allowed to freely switch between these roles and um that whole weekend had been filled with people um making cuddle puddles <laughs> eye gazing and all of these things that related to intimacy that I so deeply crave, but that I've had a hard time letting into my life. Uh, I'm just remembering that as a recurring feeling in my life. The The most recent time that happened very vis viscerally was at a beginner's tantra workshop on conscious relating about two years ago, where um, the final stage of this workshop was us practicing the wheel of consent, where you you come together as a a couple or just two people and you practice asking for what you need. So I'd like you to um, put your hand on my heart or to give me a massage. And then the other person <laughs> says yes or no to that. And when we came to that final exercise, all other exercises had to do with ourselves, like dancing and caressing yourself, feeling yourself. And I was good with all of that. But in that final round, I wasn't able to find a partner also because I didn't have the courage to actually go up and ask someone and we didn't find each other. Nobody came to me. And so I remember myself sitting, laying by myself, feet up on the wall and feeling that familiar pain of my heart in my chest, the ache down my arms. Okay. So fast forward to this cacao ceremony um, at the Be Alive weekend last fall. My go-to pattern would have been to be sitting at the window, looking out into the night and watching everybody else getting into musical co-creation and cuddling and feeling that pain. Mm -hmm. But instead, with the help of this cacao, I found the courage to actually go up to the stage-like area where they had a loop station and all kinds of instruments set up and follow my inner nudge that was telling me to um, just go and contribute um, some words and my voice and some song. And uh, wow. I remember Brave. going to the microphone and they were, you know, it's just, there was, they were jamming, they were improvising. There was someone at the keyboards, it was a bass and um, a guitar. And I, I remember like the words that were coming to me were something like, you are part human you are part animal <laughs> it's time to let out your animal and i'm and i'm howling and wow that's amazing so having so much fun and really being on a trip wow it was psychedelic because it was changing my psyche and and my whole way of relating and being and as you know as the evening went on and we went into the night it was getting close to 2 a.m. The music was dying off. There were people playing some subtle tunes. Others had already gone to bed. And I I saw two two men that were part of the group laying um, you know, in the in the cuddle place. And so I found myself at the end of this evening laying in between these two <laughs> men. And it's been very hard for me to relate to men um, you know, outside of a, a relationship context. And I had like I'd I had my hands <laughs> on each person and and I was feeling ex just this bliss and this extreme open heart. Um, and I knew in that moment that uh, cacao had helped me shift a, a really long-standing pattern of um, me excluding myself, you know, me basically keeping my heart closed, but by opening it and allowing myself to belong, 
uh, it was the greatest, the greatest gift of healing. Beautiful. Also, when I was watching others cuddle during that um, ceremony, I think my usual uh, reaction would have been to look at them and feel jealousy, especially mm -hmm. because one of the men was somebody that I had cuddled with earlier that day and done some eye gazing with. But on cacao or like with cacao <laughs> in my system, I just looked at them and could feel like the love still extending from my heart and my arms and my hands and thinking the more love, the better. That's beautiful. And then that night I could like feel my Shakti circulating. I also told myself if the person that I'm sharing a room with doesn't want to cuddle with me, I'm going to go back to the other room and join these other people um, who said they'd be fine with it. And, and I like mustered all of my courage and, and I was about to ask the person in our room, hey, um, it feels kind of unnatural with this cacao in my system to not be in physical contact. Would you like to cuddle? And once I'd become very clear within myself that that's what I was going to say, he actually offered it himself. Wow. Yeah. Like asking for what we want in um, in a vulnerable situation because we could be rejected. I could have been rejected. And seeing, like experiencing that I, I wasn't rejected um, and that even if I had been, I would have been able to go to be with these other people was also really healing. And then in the end, because of you facing your fears, it even turned around and it was, he was even asking you, right? Yeah, it's like he was mirroring my inner resolve. Uh, I didn't even have to end up doing it because I had already shifted on the inside Exactly. And that's also with cacao. Sometimes you don't notice anything in you, but you notice how other people relate to you in a different way. That also happens quite a lot that the next day suddenly synchronicities happen or. Mm. Yeah. And, and so I think what it took for cacao to really land with me and for me to notice it, her powerful effects was this very lively scene, you know? And so I, I remember seeing your offerings for the first time and that you did cacao meditations and thinking in my head, huh, that seems so strange to be like so so inward and so quiet. I, th you know, I think cacao, I relate it to dancing and singing, but that's just because that's what I what I need, I guess, you know? Yes. That's the medicine that's my heart. Um, <laughs> And cacao is so different. It's like it's so flexible, so full of variety. And it's interesting because we seem to have just about the opposite journeys with her, isn't it? Yeah. Me having to go inward, you have to go outward. And that's why there's so many cacao ceremonies out there. And I recommend everyone try out as many as you like because they're going to be so different from person mm -hmm. to person who holds it. Like I hold them differently, like inwards meditation maybe some other wisdom coming in from other traditions and then there's people who just use cacao in a mantra a singing circle or ecstatic dance and it's so important to find the right way for yourself and you mentioned psychedelic effect right it can have this feeling of it being psychedelic but just to um, make clear that cacao is not a psychedelic, but it's a psychoactive. And I think that might be the thing that you noticed. Some people might have those visions and see images and or colors or whatever. And then for me still is, although I thought I was a really visual person, I rarely have any visions. I sometimes get glimpsed nowadays, the more sensitive I get, but I still just feel it. And for me, it's more subtle. She sends me thoughts, the right thoughts in the right moments. Mm. Or she um, really lets me feel my body. And it's so strong sometimes that I really feel my heart expanding, the room expanding, um, the ticklish feeling and the groundedness, the warmth. It's incredible. <laughs> But again, this is so individual from mm -hmm. every person to another. And um, I feel throughout the journey with cacao, I I also felt that 
the more love, the better. And even if it's not directed to me from that person, I would wish it to be coming from. Mm -hmm. um, love is still there. And at some point, shortly after my birthday, I have my birthday is on summer solstice. And I was in Iceland. It was night, but basically day at night. And I was walking at a lake, a beautiful lake in north of Iceland, uh, in a little birch tree forest. And I fell in love with the birch tree. Hmm. And that's something that opened up so much in me in noticing that was actually there was some true love for this spirit of this birch tree um, that showed me love is all around, everywhere. Sometimes it doesn't come from the sources that you expect or that it doesn't come from the direction that you're looking at. You have to just turn around, like the heart, you know, the, the flower heart that you have to turn around in like 180 degrees sometimes. Mm. I think we're so focused in our culture on romantic love. All of the songs, all of the movies are geared mm -hmm. towards that. It seems like that is the goal in life. And that has us overlooking the love that permeates everything. Um everything that's animated is made of love and that we are love, that we can embody love. Exactly. It's just a d um, definition of love, isn't it? That we, I think we often use the wrong definition of it, like in romantic love and we project expectations and, um, and then we, I think we just have to practice acceptance when you spoke about acceptance, it also reminded me of another healing experience that I had the right after that weekend. I had taken some of the leftover ceremonial cacao from that evening home with me in a jar. And that Monday before picking up my daughter from preschool, I just had a few spoonfuls straight out of the fridge and it was very creamy. And that was enough, a couple of teaspoons for, to, to just go through another round of bliss and heart blasted open. And I rode my bike with a trailer to, to the forest that my daughter goes to preschool at singing out loud, <sighs> just really allowing myself to radiate my light. And, um, you know, here, I don't know what it's like where, where you live uh, in the world to your listeners, but here in, in this city of Germany, I think if you're singing on the street, people will look at you <laughs> as if you're crazy. <laughs> True. <laughs> I experience that sometimes. <laughs> and yeah. so I picked up my daughter and all of a sudden I had an eye for why children are so wonderful. I've shared on this podcast before that I've had, um, I've struggled with being a mother but in that moment, I felt my own inner child and my own playfulness. Mm -hmm. And um, I could see the beauty in the wonder and, and playfulness and curiosity that children look upon the world with. I took my daughter home and felt what it would be like to fall in love with her. Wow. And actually feel like, why did I ever think there was an issue? There's no issue. She belongs to me and I belong to her. Yes. And like the topic that had been one of my main sources of agony or pain or suffering or, you know, it was just gone. And as the effect of the cacao wore off, this feeling became another memory. But at least it showed me that I'm actually capable, like, with the help uh, probably of the whatever um, chemical constituents were in this plant. But like, yes, my body, my being is capable of feeling this way, feeling this love. It's a wonderful thing that Kikara gifted you there. Yeah. And so even though I haven't necessarily been able to keep my heart as open as with the help of all of the bliss chemicals and the spirit of cacao on that day, I've still come to a loving acceptance of an ownership of my role. And 
This makes me want to introduce today's musician, who is Carl Scott, um, a friend of yours who, as you've told me before, taught you a lot about acceptance. So there's a story behind this, as with with all of the musicians that I feature here. When Laura and I met for the first time in person, it was when I was doing a, a shamanic drum building workshop with her. She actually was leading a workshop on the winter solstice, but I wasn't able to go. And um, she generously offered to do another workshop just for me and Carl. And we both birthed our drums and we shared a piece of skin of, of deer hide. And um, yeah, he was, he was staying at your place, Laura, at that time. And you said that he also played an important part in your process of becoming a cacao priestess, so to speak, right? Yes, I actually met him on the day that I birthed my first drum. And um, it was also one day after my birthday, again, things happen around <laughs> the summer solstice, it seems. And we were talking um, a lot and connecting and he was talking a lot about acceptance and that totally resonated with me. And so on the second day of, of my drum birthing, I got the chance to um, write something on the drum, you know, on the wood and in the middle of it, basically on the top of the frame, it says acceptance. And that's because of him. And the drum was a big step in my journey and he became present in my life as a really close friend and still is and is very supportive of the work I'm doing and um, empowered me to step into this whole cacao ceremony space that I was in before, but he definitely helped me to, to develop some endurance. So at some point I already was leading cacao ceremonies and I loved it and people loved it and it was flowing and it was there. But there was one point where I was a bit in the dark and I was like, oh, I'm not sure, maybe it's too much effort and maybe I'm not right for it or who am I to say? And then he picked me up and said, well, I think you're just over the first initial high and now it shows if you're actually, yeah, having endurance to go further with it. And then he encouraged me to just... Um, wait until the next ceremony was over and I just sent one email out and I got responses back and suddenly I had new participants showing up and then I was like oh wow yeah it's true you just have to go over this hindrances sometimes that you put in front of yourself basically so um yeah he's a big inspiration mm. and I'm so glad that he was there in that moment Otherwise, who knows if we'd be talking about cacao today. Yes, <laughs> and, yes, true. I'm learning so much <laughs> from you. So Carl Scott is a musician who's originally from the UK. And since early 2011, he's been filling his little car with his cajon, his resonator, his acoustic guitar, harmonica, and many other instruments. And journeying to find people and places that he can lay his heartfelt songs before, um, like a contemporary troubadour, basically. Um, he says that he's not trying to show off his music, but rather use it as a way to connect. It's about response, not payment. It's about being moved rather than entertained. The song that I chose for today is called Hologram, and it's from his most recent album, Supporting Life. And um, the song picks up about halfway through and gets to my favorite part where he sings, your taste lingers on my lips. And uh, I kind of liked how that could also be applied to cacao. Another favorite line of mine is, come explore the vessel of my soul, which is also something that cacao allows us to do, right? When I sigh, it is a missing part inside me That space between life and death A voice that strikes me hard and pulverizes Like high tide Tide waves. One 
to be your cat sat on your chest that pure trust to give you peace both lonely creatures that finally hologram by carl scott thank you carl for being part of this co-creation i will be linking to his music in the show notes after hearing about all of these magical stories in which cacao has helped us to improve our relationships with ourselves and others i'd like to know more about why cacao has these amazing effects 
So in which ways is ceremonial cacao different from just commercial chocolate or even or even raw chocolate that's out on the market? And I'm just wondering, maybe these differing experiences from ceremony to ceremony have to do with the origin of the cacao that you're consuming. Mm. First of all, yeah, the origin. I mean, cacao grows around the equator. Mm -hmm. So you find it as well in Africa, although there's not so much ceremonial cacao coming from there. I would also be careful because they still, unfortunately, work a lot with uh, child labor, which if you buy chocolate and you know you see it's from Africa, please be aware of that and make sure that you get a fair trade a label. Fair trade one. And then the next thing, yeah, fair trade labels also thing. So most of ceremonial cacaos are not labeled, but um, that's often because so fair trade certificates are also really expensive. So not every farmer can really afford to get this certificate. And also, I have known so far that in ceremonial cacao um, growing, that they get paid even better, like over the fair trade rate, mm -hmm. without it being a certificate, because um, they get paid direct, um, at least from one source, I know for sure. And they also get paid for the beans before processing them, so before peeling, instead of paying them afterwards for just the uh, cacao mass you know, paste they produce, they pay them already before. So they make sure that the women that select the beans also get rid of the um, the rotten beans, for example, and peel them properly and everything and process them with, with care um, and not just because they get paid for the end product, so not just put in everything they can in order to get a bit more payment, you know? Oh. So it's also a lot of... Um, conscious decisions and how you pay the workers and um, it's a traditional way of processing the cacao if it's ceremonial cacao and a really important part is the fermentation of the cacao beans and it's kind of an art form because it's super um, it really depends on the the, the sort of cacao the strain there's different strains of cacao and they have different um pulps and peels for example the criollo cacao which is um, known in guatemala and which is basically one of the oldest the origins form of cacao um, it has a thinner pulp like the fruit flesh basically and it's a bit harder to peel and it's not so popular amongst industrial chocolate years because you know they want the bigger the better basically right yeah <laughs> But even amongst ceremonial cacao, there's differences, of course. There's also cacao from Peru, which is a bit of a different cacao sort. Yeah, so <laughs> so many different uh, varieties of it. Yeah, and it sounds like for the end product, if you think about it, all stages, all elements come into play to determine what the the energy and the composition yes. of the final product is like. So from the soil that it grew on to exactly. the people that grew the plants and then, like you said, peeled the fruit, began to process it. Then it's mm -hmm. shipped to another place where the beans are sometimes roasted, sometimes not, and then ground to a paste. And what's the energy in that production unit and the people that are working there? And yeah. That is very important. See, with the ceremonial cacao, it is roasted and it's not shipped anywhere. It's really roasted and processed all um, at the place. Um, I mean, there's others now that do it themselves. but Yeah, I, I do know another company, uh, Firefly Chocolate, ceremonial cacao oh, in yeah, the sure. States. They're also like a bean to bar or to cup producer. So they work closely <laughs> with, with the growers and farmers. And I think that they roast it in... Um, California. Yeah, that's also nice if you can do that. Um, also, with the commercial chocolate, you have so many more steps, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So the commercial chocolate then separates the cacao butter from the cacao because it's so precious and it holds so many nutrients. So you actually want to have the cacao butter in the cacao and not the cocoa powder that we know, right? But because it's used in cosmetic products and whatnot, they separate it. And then mm -hmm. in order to create milk chocolate, they then add it 
to it afterwards, again, often from completely different sources and the cacao mm. bud itself gets processed more and re- goes through machineries and all these processes are not necessary um, if you want to have the pure cacao. You can see sometimes in ceremonial cacao that it's not as smooth looking, not as shiny and has some like white plume it's called in it. So it's like a bit white parts and I think you've might have noticed um, if you had like a, ch- a chocolate bar with you and it got really hot in summer and then it at home it um, solidified yeah solidified again exactly and then you see there's white lines in it and that's basically what you can see in ceremonial cacao sometimes because it's not tempered so the cacao is not being um, heated and then melted again and um, like you know chocolatiers love doing it you see that sometimes in advertisement that they stir in this big pot of chocolate you know and then it's becoming really smooth and shiny and beautiful and um that's nice but it's not necessary and especially the cacao spirit um is in favor of the least processing because she says you know why i don't it doesn't have to look perfect it's about you and about the energy and the more you process the, the more energy gets gets lost right or as well the more energy you as a person put in so you also have to consider the people who do it. Are they happy? What um, what energy are they bringing in while processing the medicine? Exactly. I guess it could go in both directions. I, I even imagine like whoever's processing it uh, and their energy going in could even add to the spirit of cacao. It could be like an added mm-hmm. blessing <laughs> or it could take away from it. Yeah. And also... Um, what is really important to um, say as well is that um, we all re- already know that chocolate makes you happy, right? In our Western mm-hmm. world, that's um, because we do know that it helps us feel happy or content. Um, but in commercial chocolate, it's such a low percentage of the actual nutritions that are in cacao. And I'm not only talking about the um the bromine and then the meat and all these um wonderful energetic effects but also about magnesium and zinc and iron um and in the processed chocolate there's only a really tiny percentage of that so you might also want to consider trying ceremonial cacao just for the health benefits I have sensed the medicine of cacao. She's persisted even through all of the processing. But I have wondered, looking at the ingredients of like a 99 or 93% chocolate mm-hmm. bar, it says cocoa powder and cacao butter, and mm-hmm. then maybe a little bit of vanilla or um, or salt. And I, I looked at it and I was like, well, why is it cocoa powder and cacao butter separate, even if it's a 99% bar? Like, why, yes. do they, why do they have to take it apart then? That's the issue. It's an industrialization of the whole product. For me, it was just crazy to actually know about um, some chocolate factories or companies that actually use then a, a cacao butter from a different cacao strain, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that brings me to another topic, um, which is like originally the practice of cacao ceremonies if I understand correctly, comes from Middle America, Central America, Mm -hmm. Mexico, Guatemala. Yeah, I mean, talking about cultural appropriation, right? (laughs) So there's actually no traditional cacao ceremony. Oh, really? Yes, and that's what makes it um, so much more accessible for everyone and for us too. And that's why I fuse in my um, heritage of, you know, Celtic, um, sites and, and and all these Germanic traditions as well um, because I feel I'm not that connected with the Mesoamerican tradition but I do use cacao and it helps me connect those things together and cacao originally like was found first about 5,300 5, BC in Ecuador so in South America hmm. um, and then it basically um went up towards Mexico. We know that now because of archaeology and because they found theobromine in vessels. Mm. So that's how we could see that it moved a bit up 
um, Middle America and um, um, was used first by the, well, we don't really know who used it first and because it's been a while ago, <laughs> isn't it? And then, the, but the old site used it and the Mayans and the Aztecs and we know that they used it for rituals like rites of passages, even in childbirth in order to give the woman strength. Ah, also, it was used as an aphrodisiac um, and for um, strength for for warriors. It was given to them. Um, but there's no set ceremony. We just know it's been used in different forms. And it's been used as a really important currency as well. You know, it was so precious, so valuable. Yeah, but the, uh, then the ceremonies just came up because people connected with the spirit but it's quite a recent thing. So there's no traditional Maya ceremony. But now we use it as a, we do cacao ceremonies where it's actually about honoring the plant and coming together because of it. Um, but there it's often just used as like, okay, we have a wedding ceremony, for example, and we drink cacao or there's a festivity or something. And then we use cacao with it, but it's not the only purpose mm. for it, you know? Yeah. But, there is something about that I feel really important and that's the, the presence and the intention, mm -hmm. how it is harvested, but also how it is then presented to other people. And um, I think there we come into what, what makes a ceremony a ceremony and how does it differentiate to a ritual, right? Because we all have our rituals in terms of having a morning coffee, for example, but then having a ceremony means that there's someone present that is connected to the plant spirit that actually acknowledges that there is a plant spirit, that it's not just something you consume, mm. but that you work with it. So after all of these heart opening experiences that I shared about earlier on, I was determined to keep uh, incorporating cacao into my life, perhaps even into my work. For me, though, it was almost as if drinking cacao on the daily, it was too strong. It was too much for my constitution. Uh, and I'm wondering if you've heard of this before and what your experience is around communing daily with cacao. Yeah, so I take cacao daily. So um, since almost a year now, I think I had like a one week break in between. But I don't necessarily recommend it. It's just um, depending on how your constitution is for sure. Also because it is detoxifying, not only on a body level, but also on an emotional level, on a spiritual level, an energetic level. So if you're sensitive, that detox process might also be tough on your system. Um, but also you need less. The more you get connected with cacao it's just funny it's like the other way around as other things like sugar caffeine makes you addicted mm. it goes the other way around so now it's even if i just smell the cacao i i get a little high or if i just eat one bean one bean you know it completely resonates and i connect so yeah i consume cacao daily but i choose intuitively every day how much i need and the other day I made myself this amazing cup of cacao um, with vanilla and uh, tonka bean and some medicinal mushrooms. It was so delicious. <laughs> but I drank one sip and I was so excited already by while you know preparing it and I smelled it and I was like, oh, this is good. This is so good. <laughs> and there was so much in it that I had a sip. And my body was like, this is enough. You're full. You're filled with everything. This is ex You don't need even more. You're already there. It's all you need. <laughs> it's all you need. And I was like, okay, it's such a pity because it's really good. But all right. I just um, I just wait, put it in the fridge, you know, drink it later the day or in the next day even. And like you said, the next day, then it solidifies a bit more and it's become it becomes this kind of chocolate mousse. Mm -hmm amazing so good as well and if you then you can add fruits and coconut oil and whatnot to it <sighs> but yeah so I just listen to what I need in that particular day and like I said it depends on your constitution and what your body needs and your system um, for me it works really well and I think that's also why it makes sense that I hold ceremonies that I work so close with this medicine because 
um, it resonates with me and my body is right. mm-hmm. still craving it. And you're really sensitive to substances as well and um, makes sense that you go low on it. And you might, yeah, just want to smell it or have some cacao beans close by where you can just snack one every now and then. Oh, that's a great idea. To just have it on my altar. Yes, exactly. That's what I have. If I have cacao here, then I'm going to eat it. And the problem is that I don't even have the patience to then brew an actual drink from it. I will just eat the powder out of, if it's in a powder <laughs> form, or um, or the Amazing. nib or the bar or whatever. Because there is a part of me that is craving that release, that heart opening so yeah, much. Sure. But I also then notice that I will get high and as it fades off there is a crash that's not as dramatic as if I had eaten a bar of chocolate that also has sugar in it but that I do go through that feeling of it's almost like it was too much for my adrenals or my nervous system I'm not Mm -hmm. sure yeah well um so I think yeah having it in the altar is a nice way to honor it and also you can connect with it without really consuming too much Um, If you do, I just recommend being fully present and set an intention Mm. um, and take time um, to sit with it, to notice your body and to enable yourself to actually go deep and also take time afterwards, have a journal close by or also the next day noticing what shifts, what happens um, and drink a lot of water. Um, Best would be before and after the ceremony. So in between, it would be good to let the cacao work because the detoxifying needs then also water to, you know, wash it out of your system. And also eat whole foods afterwards, especially with your sensitive constitution. Um, Don't fast too much. Like eat some good nuts and and grounding things, lentils, um, you know, dal or... Squash. <laughs> Vegetables. Squash. I love squash. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's the perfect, you know, that's just, this is just something grounding that you might need afterwards. Yeah, it, it does increase my appetite afterwards, also for mm-hmm. real foods. And um, bringing in more intention, I think, is really good advice because, like I said, I, if I'm just spooning the powder, Uh, between one thing and the next it's different than actually taking the time to brew and blend exactly the cacao and then I can also you know it doesn't have to be a daily thing I see many people that I follow on Instagram um, sharing pictures about their daily cacao and so that's why I thought that well that's just kind of how you do it as Mm, instead of a morning coffee it turns into your morning cacao but it's just accepting that that's maybe too much for me and maybe also for some other sensitive people listening to this episode and that it can stay something special like oh yes exactly really well uh, said actually it is lovely if it's something special too if you have it once a month but then you have it properly and you actually celebrate a ceremony for yourself for example that's how i started with cacao right i i used to do a cacao ceremony just for myself every new and full moon and that was just my way of like okay on this day i'm gonna take some time and sit with it maybe do some divination draw a card or write something or just meditate which um Brings me back to what you said about when you started your own cacao ritual years back and how that evening where you were painting all through the night, yeah. I, I also find that cacao uh, does increase my creativity. And um, I've had a similar experience where in the moment I'm feeling like, oh my gosh, this is so good. <laughs> and then... Like wondering afterwards, though, whether any of this was real. So for me, cacao actually is very much a uh, voice opening. And so I've I've had a cacao trip, so to speak, where I <laughs> actually several where I saw visions of myself doing um, like a sound healing ceremony together with a partner um, using my voice and instruments and also just feeling like my voice is actually different after having had some cacao, having songs pop in, um, you know, catching drops of songs and wanting to record that in the moment. But even as it was happening, I was like, cacao, 
are you like <laughs> kidding me? Is this because you know like music will of course bring me joy and open my heart? But in that moment, I thought like I need to put everything else aside. This is my path. I should make music my focus. And yeah, cacao and song and music and nothing else matters anymore. And even in that moment, I was like, ah, I think I should take this with like a grain of salt. Like I think this is the over enthusiasm of Mama Cacao working me oh, right yeah. now. She can be really enthusiastic. She works in a different world, right? She doesn't. She doesn't have to um, consider our daily life and our restrictions that we sometimes have to face. So of course, she's like all in. Yeah, you have time for music all day. <laughs> yeah, and also um, this feeling of oh my gosh, I need to um, also become a cacao practitioner and mm -hmm. offer ceremonies and spread the medicine and feeling. Like that is my calling and I want to become um, a distributor in Germany for some company. Like uh, in the moment, all of that felt so real and true. And then, you know, as the effects faded out down, um, I came to see that that was just maybe part of the experience. And yeah. Well, you know, it's all possibilities. Cacao seems to show you often ways and like you just described with your daughter, you know, the love for her that actually cacao showed that it is possible. And the same with like, you can be everything you want, you know, it is possible. That doesn't have to mean that you have to act on it necessarily. And um, what I feel helps if, you, if you're overflowing with ideas is to just write them all down and then see a week later, or a month later, a moon cycle later, whatever, you look back at it and say, okay, This idea is actually something I want to bring forth and I want to birth and I want to go through process because birthing an idea is like a childbirth, isn't it? It's like a long process and it's just going to happen from one day to the other and it needs dedication. So um, I think after Kikau had shown you all these possibilities, it's then a selection process of what can I do at this moment and what has my priority. And then you give that full attention and intention, same as you give it to Kakao. Yeah. And also, I was actually hearing music, and I'm not generally like clear audience, um, but I could hear all of these instruments. And just because it seems so far away from where I'm at now doesn't mean that it's never going to happen. Like I might have been gifted an actual vision of something that will manifest in the course of the years to come. Totally. Yeah. And that time is not linear, is it? You know, you might have seen that something something that is already existing somewhere. Ah, that's true. In you as well. Yeah. So I'm so glad you came onto the show. I'm so grateful for our personal connection as well. You're so welcome. Yeah, and don't hesitate to contact me on Instagram. I just love to connect with fellow cacao people in the world. Oh. Yes, connection. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us in this wild garden and listening to today's show. I love connecting with my listeners and hearing about what insights you gained. Feel free to leave a comment below the show notes on floweringshe.com and be sure to follow me on Instagram at floweringsherose. If you like this podcast, head on over to iTunes and leave a review and I'll be sure to send you some extra fairy dust. From my blossoming heart and my buzzing womb to yours, until next time.